this voice polling which has come out today. Remember, the key uh, message change of the past couple of weeks was Chicken Little. Um, now, whether it works out to be the sort of Hillary Clinton deplorable moment, I still believe that, you know, reading the electoral roll, the under 40s and under 50s now having about 400,000 more voters than over 50s, that there's still well and truly a path. I just don't do the happy talk. I don't tell you, throw the chum in the water. I tell you the demographics. But I also give you the data like this poll that we mentioned before. So, 51, 49 in favour of no. You need uh, four states to get it over the line. There are currently only three that are saying yes. New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia, Western Australia, Queensland. Now, again, when the Prime Minister can walk on water, he can sell the vibe. But now that he's not walking on water, he's actually going to have to turn around and rather than say, hey, give me a blank cheque and I'll work out the zeros after you've given it to me, maybe he's going to actually have to present the legislation that says X number of people for Y number of term. There's going to actually have to be a little more detail here because the vibe is starting to wane. Now, I still believe that there's huge amounts of TV ads and door knocking and all the rest of it that's mm. going to go around. So... Anyone who thinks this is the final number, you're kidding yourself. Because remember, uh, Sam, in these numbers, it's actually pretty close in the low 40s, about yes and no, with almost 20% of people who are currently sitting in undecided. So let's deal with this question first rather than everything else. Do you think undecided is a soft no or a maybe yes? Great question. Great question. And it's the question, right? That's 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 the whole thing that this, this, this whole cape is turning on. Um, I don't know. My guess is they are genuinely undecided because I think there is about 20% of the people that don't even know that there is a voice campaign, voice referendum going on. They're like, what? Mm. You want me to vote on an Indigenous voice? What? I don't... What and do you... they see it as a lovely, a lovely Who's cloud? Who's playing this weekend, right? Like, I... Most people are disengaged with politics. It seems strange to people who talk about politics every day, but most people out there probably yeah. don't even know yeah. what the voice is. But and if they why... say they support it, sure, but many of those people might I, not I even find know it remarkable it that it's only 18% are saying, I don't yeah. know. But, James, yes, I mean, that's why I talk about demographics and all the rest of it, and that's not... Please don't confuse this as advocacy, but it's just about saying, hey, the demographics are where they are, the electoral roll is where it is, um, but yeah, why but do you think uh... undecided is, say, a no that doesn't want to come out and say no? Well, a bunch of reasons. I mean, one of them is just simply the shy factor that an awful lot of people who are no voters don't want to tell a pollster no because, you know, they're being told, oh, you know, you're racist if yeah. if you don't if little. you don't support it. And that's so much of the vibe around this whole thing is that, you know, I mean, I get morally bludgeoned all the time on Twitter because, you know, I write columns saying that the voice should go down. And, you know, say, oh, well, you're a terrible person because, no, I'm not a terrible person. We just disagree. And, yes. You know, and that's and that's the way it is. But Beyond that, though, you know, I think on a few of these other questions, you know, the corporate money, I don't know if it's going to come through as heavily as we think it is mm. because uh, the corporations want to back a winner. And if it's not going to be a winner, they don't want to get half their uh, cus customers or constituents or clients offside. So there's that. Um, and, you know, just the other thing, too, historically, labor has often wanted to remake society through referenda. It's been trying to do this for decades, and they've got a bit of a fantasy about this ever since Whitlam. It doesn't really work. And historically, a midterm referendum without bipartisan support goes down. So just simply those mechanics. I know, Paul, you talked the demographics, and there's a fair point to be made about that, but the mechanics of way, the way referendums work in mm. this country, I think is very much James, against it. Yeah, James. I, I think it's going to go even worse for the Yes campaign, and James is right, if you look at the history. But also, people just don't like being bludgeoned over the head with, you are racist, or you, if you think a certain way, or you vote a certain way, and it's time to get with the... No, that that's the way to lose people. Well, we should learn the lessons of Brexit, Trump 16. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let, let me just throw in a little bit more data, then we'll take a break, come back with plenty more of other things, including the number of people with multiple jobs in the country, which is now even higher than it was before the pandemic. What's that say about the economy that apparently is going to change over the past 12 months? 16% of Labor voters undecided on the question of the voice. 17% of coalition voters. So even in those huge swaths of what you think are the traditional parties, you'd think there'd be a golf. They're not. Basically the same number. Greens voters, only 11% of those. Other voters, now this can go everything from teal to one nation, but that's 20% of those voters. And of the uncommitted, and who knows exactly how many that is at any one election, that is 25%. So you see where, if there's a gap to be closed, where is it to be closed? In other and the otherwise traditionally undecided. But if Labor can't win over their own people into even a higher number than they currently do, 
And that's how statistically we start to get close to a fail. 